In the beginning, the mighty beings known as Celestials created the sun and other forms of life, and the universe was at pace. But one day, an unnatural species of predator called Deviants emerges from deep space and begin to destroy everything in their path. The leader of the Celestials Arisham bring an immortal group of superhumans known as the Eternals from the planet Olympia, and sends them on their ship called the Domo to Earth. In Mesopotamia in 5000 BC, a group of humans are fishing when suddenly they are attacked by Deviants coming out of the sea. At that moment the Eternals arrive to defend them with their powers, Icarus uses his eye beams and flies to fight the beasts, while Makari uses her super speed to move the humans out of the way. Kingo shoots energy blasts to attack from afar, while Thena and Gilgamesh summon energy weapons to fight hand to hand. Sprite provides support with her illusions, and Fastos also supports through his advanced inventions. A fierce battle ensues, and thanks to the Eternals' excellent teamwork, soon the Deviants are defeated, and team leader Ayak heals any injuries they got in battle. The humans are scared of them and try to attack, but Druig immediately uses his mind-controlling powers to calm them down. Then Circe transforms a primitive knife into actual nice metal as proof they're here to help humanity. Years pass and in the present day, the Eternals live pretending to be normal among humans. In London, Circe goes to class where she is supposed to be giving a lesson, and she finds her boyfriend Dane filling in for her. Suddenly the lecture is interrupted by a large earthquake, so Circe makes her students go for cover under the tables and uses her power to stop some debris from crushing a student. In the nearby river, a dog witnesses a deviant come out of the river. In the evening, Circe later celebrates Dane's birthday with a few friends. Sprite uses an illusion to look older and hide the fact she ages mentally but not physically, however the illusion is broken if someone touches and she quickly gives up. Dane asks Circe to move in with him, but she turns him down, and he begins wondering if she's hiding something because Sprite is always making odd comments. After the party, the trio walks home, but suddenly they are attacked by a huge deviant named Crow. Circe uses her powers to capture it in the ground, but Crow soon breaks up and runs to the streets. Sprite casts an illusion that multiplies her and Circe to confuse the monster, but Crow shocks them by being able to tell who the real ones are, which deviants could never do. When Crow is about to kill Sprite, Icarus shows up and saves her to then proceed to fight the deviant directly. Their battle causes a bus to get flipped, and Circe rushes to transform into rose petals to avoid a crash. Crow shocks everyone again when it reveals it can heal its own wounds, but it's still clear that Icarus has the upper hand and escapes through the river. Afterward Circe tells Dane the truth about her identity, and he asks her why they never helped during humanity's greatest tragedies. Circe explains that they were instructed to never interfere in the orders of mankind so as to not hinder their development as a society. After destroying the deviants, they were told to wait on Earth until it was time to go home. She also tells Dane that she and Icarus were together for centuries, but it didn't work out. She later goes back to her apartment to discuss the issue with Sprite and Icarus, and after reaching the conclusion the earthquake and the deviant are connected, they agree that they need to get the team back together. This brings back memories of 575 BC in Babylon. Humanity is developing under the guidance of the Eternals, who fight the Deviants whenever they try to attack. Every time they show up they're violent and ruthless, but the Eternals fight together in perfect sync to kill them quickly without much trouble. After one particular intense battle, Ayak uses her special power stone to form a link to speak with Arishem. She expresses respect for his grand plan, but she doesn't like what it may mean for humans. Arishem tells her not to get attached to them and to follow through with the plan. Afterward Ayak goes back to the lair where the Eternals are living among society openly. Fastos is developing a steam engine to provide for mankind, and Sprite uses her powers to entertain children with stories that come to life through her illusions. Druig likes using his mind control to stop fights, but Makari scolds him because they aren't supposed to interfere. Meanwhile Icarus and Circe spend time together and fall in love, admitting it to each other with the beauty of Earth as their witness. Years later they get married in the Gupta Empire. Back in the present, Circe, Sprite, and Icarus travel to South Dakota to Ayak's ranch, only to find her dead outside her home. Sprite cries and uses an illusion to remember her dearly, coming to the conclusion that Crow killed Ayak by absorbing her powers, that's why it could heal itself. When Circe approaches the body to mourn, the stone in Ayak's body that was bestowed to her by the Celestials comes out and attaches itself to Circe. This causes her to briefly catch a glimpse of Arishem saying it is almost time before she loses sight of him. Sprite points out that Ayak has chosen Circe as her successor, but Icarus is worried it may be Maud Wiry. This brings back another memory. In 1521 AD in Tenochtitlan, the group was fighting the last deviants left on the planet. Meanwhile humans are at war, but Ayak doesn't let Druig stop them. Suddenly Thena begins feeling sick and says it's too late because soon everyone is going to die. Her eyes change and she begins attacking her friends, hurting a few of them, thanks to the element of surprise. Ayak lets her hurt her in purpose to get close and use her powers on her mind, clearing it from this strange impulse reaction. Thena attacks her anyway, so Gilgamesh comes forward and fights her until he manages to knock her out. Later when Thena wakes up without remembering what happened, it's revealed she suffers from Maud Wiry, a result of her ancient memories collapsing in on themselves and driving her insane. There's no cure for it, 
the only way to make her better would be to erase her mind completely for her to start over, which Ayak thinks it's the best solution for the sake of safety. The others don't want to lose the Thena they love, and Druig yells at Ayak, questioning her leadership. He's tired of seeing humankind destroy each other without interfering, so suddenly uses his powers to stop the war and he leaves to work on his own, announcing the only way to stop him would be killing him. Gilgamesh announces he can take care of Thena, so Ayak allows everyone to go and live among humans. The deviants are already over, so now they can find their own purpose while waiting for the call from home. Back to the present, Circe, Sprite, and Icarus travel to Mumbai to find Kingo, who is now a famous Bollywood superstar. His valet Karun knows his secret and has been working with him for decades. The trio tells Kingo what's going on, and at first he refuses to go, saying he likes this life. However Karun convinces Kingo to go and be the hero everyone admires, and Karun even accepts to come along to record it all in a documentary style. They take Kingo's private jet to Australia, where Sprite expresses annoyance at Kingo for abandoning her for the sake of fame, but Kingo explains he became an actor thanks to the inspiration gifted by Sprite's storytelling. In Australia, the team follows a trail of deviant bodies to find Thena and Gilgamesh in their private house in the countryside. Gilgamesh has become skilled at cooking and taking care of the house, and Thena spends her time making some ominous drawings. When she sees them arrive, she has another lapse and tries to attack them, saying everyone on the planet will soon die, but Gilgamesh stops her and Sprite clears her mind with an illusion that reminds her who she really is. Circe takes the time to look at Thena's drawings and feels bad because she can't reconnect with Arishem, but Gilgamesh gives her a pep talk and reminds her it's more important to listen. Circe sits down and relaxes, which finally activates the stone and makes her appear in front of Arishem. He tells her that the emergence is happening, and he explains the true purpose of the Eternals. They were sent to bring forth the birth of the Celestial Tiamat, as new Celestials come about every few millennia and they have done this process on other planets before Earth. They come about through intelligent life, which had been halted by the attack of the Deviants, but with the Eternals having gotten rid of them, Arishem says it is now time to wipe out all life on Earth to make way for Tiamat. Circe is horrified by the revelation but Arishem defends it by saying this is just the cycle of creation for their life forms. He then explains that Olympia never existed and that she and the other Eternals are just creations from the World Forge as artificial beings made for use by the Celestials. Circe cannot remember this because the Eternals have their memories reset after each emergence. To top it all off, Arishem created the Deviants to regulate the balance between predators and prey so intelligent life may prosper, but he lost control of the Deviants and they became predators themselves. This is why he made it so that Eternals could not evolve as they do. Afterward, Circe tells the team what she learned and they realize Thena's illness is actually their old memories activating and telling them the truth. They are shocked and upset to learn they're artificial, but most of them resolve to find a way to save the people of Earth. They figure they must find Druig and see if he may use his power to overtake the mind of Tiamat. The Eternals travel to the Amazon next. Druig is staying in a village where he has been leading a group of people that live in absolute peace. He doesn't want to help the others in their mission, feeling betrayed over the fact his whole existence is a lie. In the evening, Kingo expresses his sympathy for Sprite because he knows that she's in love with Icarus but has not been able to act on it due to her childlike appearance. Sprite appreciates the sentiment until she notices Karun is recording and she breaks the camera. Circe calls Dane to check on him and Icarus watches with jealousy, causing Circe to ask him why he left her. When Icarus is about to explain himself, Crow suddenly shows up and takes him away. More deviants attack the village, so the Eternals immediately jump into action. Circe fortifies a building to hide the humans inside then throws a bunch of trees on top of the deviants. Druid controls the humans as a unified army, but Circe immediately makes him stop and send the humans to safety. Kingo takes a moment to charge his beam and kills a deviant by blowing up its head. Icarus fights Crow, who pushes him against the ground to absorb his powers. However Gilgamesh comes to fight him next, and while they're engaged in battle, Thena loses her mind again and attacks Icarus. Gilgamesh notices and pushes away to come to Thena and comfort her, managing to calm her down. Then Icarus goes after a flying deviant and makes it land in the village, where he kills a bunch of them with his eye beams. One of them surprises him from behind and Circe comes to the rescue, surprising everyone by transforming the deviant into a tree, which she never was able to do before. Gilgamesh continues to fight Crow, but he's so distracted by keeping an eye on Thena that Crow kills him and absorbs his powers. Then Crow changes form, looking more human-like and learning how to speak English. Crow accuses the Eternals of being murderers, but when Icarus shows up to fight it, Crow runs away. Then Thena rushes to Gilgamesh's side, who dies in her arms after telling her to always remember. Later, they burn Gilgamesh's body and Thena throws his ashes into the river. Finally understanding that controlling everyone would make him no better than a deviant, Druig agrees to join the mission, but his power isn't strong enough to control a celestial, so they'll need to find Fastos. Another memory shows 1945 in Hiroshima, just after the drop of the atomic bomb. Fastos stands in the aftermath of the bombing weeping to Ayak and feeling remorse for helping humans develop and advance in technology only to continue killing each other. It is here where he loses faith in humanity and decides to leave it behind. 
Back to the present, the team arrives in Chicago and is shocked to discover that Fastos lives with a husband and a son in a house in the suburbs. After hearing the story, Fastos explains his husband gave his faith in humanity back, but he isn't willing to abandon his family for the sake of a dangerous mission. However his husband tells him to go through with it if it means that there will be a future for them and their son. Next the Eternals travel to Iraq, where they use their powers to free the Domo from its underground hideout. Macri has been living there all this time, only using her speed to get out for supplies. Fastos comes up with the idea of linking everyone's powers together through the Uni Mind, which will allow them to transfer their powers so that Druid may mind control Tiamat. Kingo has doubts about this whole deal, and he and Sprite say they'd rather follow Icarus' lead, who clearly has doubts as well. However Icarus tells his friend that he is not who Kingo thinks he is. Then Icarus revisits another memory. Six days earlier, Ayak's visiting Icarus to tell him the time for the emergence is finally coming, revealing Icarus has always known the truth. After living with humans all this time, Ayak thinks they shouldn't go through with the mission because humanity and Earth are beautiful, so they deserve better. Icarus tells Ayak he has something to show her first and brings her to Alaska. At a frozen lake, a bunch of deviants have reappeared, and Icarus explains they were frozen for centuries before the glacier began to melt because Earth's core got hotter thanks to the incoming emergence. Then Icarus announces he's still loyal to Arisham and pushes Ayak to the lake, where Crow quickly catches her and absorbs her powers. Afterward Icarus takes Ayak to the farmhouse, where he leaves the body for Cersei to find later. In his grief, he can't help shooting beams that start a fire. Back to the present, Icarus tells Cersei that he still loves her, and Cersei holds his hand in comfort without saying it back. Moments later she feels the stone activating inside her, meaning the emergence is about to start. Fasto sends Macquarie to locate the source of the emergence, and with her super speed she goes all over Earth to find the right spot to be an active volcano in the Indian Ocean. Suddenly Icarus puts on his armor and announces he wishes Ayak didn't choose Cersei. He attacks the main room and reveals he's known everything since they left Babylon, and the team realizes it was Icarus who killed Ayak. When Makari comes back with the intel, Icarus tries to attack her, and Kingo takes the hit for her. No seeing Icarus as his leader anymore, Kingo wants to attack him back, but at that moment Sprite announces she's on his side and creates an illusion that allows them to escape. Afterward Kingo announces he's leaving with Karun because he doesn't think saving Earth is a good idea, since Celestials being born means new planets being created as well. The team needs a new plan to make up for the missing members, and Druid points out Cersei was able to transform a deviant into a tree. However Cersei still has doubts because she doesn't understand why she was chosen by Ayak, so Thena explains a leader protects their loved ones, and Ayak knew Cersei loved humanity since day one. Ready to fight, Cersei allows Fastos to take the special stone out of her body and use it to power the uni mind. The Eternals travel to the volcano and Icarus orders Sprite to protect the emergence while he breaks into the ship. Thena begins fighting him to keep him distracted, giving time to the others to activate the uni mind, which deactivates the volcano. Icarus rushes to stop them, first grabbing Druig and killing him with his eye beams, then attacking the ship to make it crash. Furious, Mikari begins fighting Icarus fiercely while the volcano behind them erupts to start the emergence. Cersei runs up the volcano to see if she can do anything while Thena and Gilgamesh join Makari to fight Icarus, but he's too powerful and they can't stop him even if they work together. At that moment, Crow arrives and joins the fight too, concentrating on Icarus. However the others don't want it to become more powerful so they attack it first. Makari traps it in a dirt tornado and Thena kicks him, sending him into a cave. Icarus uses the distraction to try to go after Cersei, but Fastos uses a special trap he invented to capture him and keep him on the ground. Inside the cave, Crow uses Gilgamesh's voice to mess with Thena's mind, making her drop her guard. However when it is about to absorb her powers, it accidentally quotes Gilgamesh's remember and Thena wakes up to immediately kill it. At the top of the volcano, Cersei is shocked to find Ayak, only to suddenly get stabbed. Ayak had been an illusion made by Sprite, who has always been jealous of Cersei for getting to live an adult life. She prepares her powers to accelerate the emergence, but at that moment Druig shows up and knocks her out. Suddenly the ground starts to shake and the sea goes mad as Tiamat emerges from the volcano. Cersei stands on top of him and tries to use her powers to stop him, but at that moment Icarus frees himself from Fasto's trap and goes after her. However seeing the woman he overwhelms with memories and he can't bring himself to kill her. Cersei uses the chance to activate the uni mind and this allows her to amplify her powers to transform Tiamat into nothing but a giant rock statue. Realizing his mistake, Icarus apologizes in tears and flies to space, where the sun burns him down to match the legend of his name. Sprite is devastated to see him gone, but Cersei still has some power from the Unimen left, thus she uses it to take away Sprite's immortality so that she may live a normal human life. Once their mission is over, the Eternals split up once again. Thena joins Makari and Druig on the Domo as they go look for other Eternals, while Fastos returns to his family, Sprite enlists in a boarding school, and Kingo returns to his movies. Cersei rejoins Dane, who accepts her for who she is. Suddenly, Rishem appears in the sky and summons Cersei, Kingo, and Fastos. He tells them that he knows they betrayed them, 
so he'll take them away for judgment.